to the League of Legends Hour with Gamers R Us, where gaming is everything. I am your host, Drew Frere, and with me, as always, is Casey Glynn. Today, we're going to talk a lot about the preseason changes that we've got going on and some of the season rewards that have become fleshed out over this past week. The first thing we want to talk about today is the Victorious Ward. If you haven't seen it, we have video and some pictures of what this ward is going to look like. And let me tell you, it is quite a doozy and well worth your effort to get. Yeah, I think... It goes along just with uh, Elise's Victoria said. It's like her bulb when she's in spider form. That's the main part of the ward. It's like a big blue crystal in the middle. And it's actually, right now, I don't know if it's a bug or not, it's the size of Tristana. Yeah, I, I saw that. It's about Yordle size. So <laughs> either a Yordle's going to come out of there or we've got sort of a glitch on our hands and we're going to need to scale that down a little bit. Though they did stress in the press release that... The particles and sizing were not final and that they might add something or take something away or change it a lot before it was released. So they're definitely covering their ass up a little bit there. <laughs> See, I think having a ward like that would just be, like, really funny, just having a really big-ass ward. Yeah, no, cool no, it would be great. It, it might be a little bit of a challenge because you'd be able to see it a lot easier and maybe click on it a lot easier. Ah, to kill details, it. details. I mean, <laughs> if I get a giant ward for being a good ranked player and it's easier to kill, I'm still going to use him anyway, though. Yeah. <laughs> so, moving on, we've also seen a lot of preseason changes that have been implemented in the public beta. You might have heard a little while ago that uh, Riot Games is pulling all the best supports from the League of Legends world and bringing them to an undisclosed location. To in Los Angeles. <laughs> undisclosed <laughs> in Los Angeles somewhere to uh, look over some new changes they were doing to the support group. Kind of like uh, how Valve brought in all the pro Counter-Strike players before they released CSGO. It's great to see that Riot's considering their competitive players before they're releasing stuff, as opposed to nerfing the hell out of stuff after the competitive players abuse it when it's been <laughs> released. So it's good that they're getting sort of jump on this one. We won't have to see any changes afterwards. Yeah. Now, one of the biggest changes that's got us excited is the new change of when the jungle's going to spawn. Yeah. I believe it's at a minute 30, right, Casey? Yeah, the new jungle is a little bit earlier. Um, I think the new jungle camps, they start at 1.30, and the minions actually spawn at one minute now. I think this will make it so that there's no early game aggression whatsoever. I think invades are going to be a thing of the past because people are not going to want to lose out on that experience and gold you get from lane. You see, that's, that's kind of sad for me. As a support player, <laughs> one of my greatest sort of pleasures in life was to play Thresh, Blitzcrank, or uh, Leona and run into the bushes in mid with my whole team early on and get a kill. That's like kind of what's got me through a lot of ranked, I'm going to say. <laughs> I'm not going to lean too heavily on that crutch, but yeah. I'm, I'm kind of sad that they've taken away from us, but we are getting a lot out of it as support players that will hopefully fill the void that was where those early invades were, one of the only exciting things we were able to do. Yeah, I mean, I think also with the minion change, I think they're doing this to make it so that junglers can't do the blue buff, red buff gank kind of uh, pattern that's really been standardized right now. And it's really it really hurts the bottom lane and the top lane specifically because those lanes are usually really low level by the time that level three uh, jungler comes in and ganks. That's true, and not every champion could do that, right? In the jungle, there were only certain junglers like Lee Sin, Jarvan. Yeah. I think there were a few others who could do it, but not every jungler could do it. And it was yeah. kind of OP that they're hitting your lane a few levels <laughs> ahead of you already, like yeah. that early on. It was definitely an issue, and I'm glad to see that they changed it. Now, we have another jungle change coming up as well, which is that a sixth camp has been announced. Now, this camp which won't contain buffs at the moment, but it seems like it's going to be another camp full of trash monsters, kind of like Wolves or Wraiths, and we're hoping that that's going to even out sort of the uh, the boost that bottom left side got with their Baron, I mean with their <laughs> Golem, sorry, that were down there, <laughs> and they could sit back and just do those whenever they wanted, whenever they yeah. pushed their lane. Yeah, so it's going to give the top side the same opportunities. Yeah, I think this is going to be on the blue side to make it so that each quarter of the jungle has three camps each. Um, I think the best place to put it would probably be right... Um, if you're talking about blue side, you have the blue buff, and on top of that, there's that little area where it kind of like two paths meet, and it's where you kind of gank from when that's you're getting top lane. I think yep. if a camp was right there, I think that would be the best place for it. Yeah, that spot's always kind of been kind of desolate, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Nothing really goes on there besides a <laughs> lot of ganking. And hopefully that'll give people more incentive to kind of ward up there because you see a lot of people coming out of try for dives on that area. Yeah. So it would be great to get more presence there, have some more stuff. Maybe even give junglers something to do while they're waiting for a dive to happen up there. <laughs> yeah, and I think it'll go along with um, a couple of the other changes they're doing with jungle are they're making 
items like Wiggles Lantern and all the other jungle items, they give you increased gold. So along with this extra camp, you're going to be getting more experience, more gold. So I think carries in the jungle like Eve, like, oh god, now I'm being put my own being put on the spot here. Do you know any other carries in the jungle? Any other jungle carries? Yeah. I'd argue that Lee Sin was one. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I mean, like, ones that you don't regularly see that have low base health, like those yeah, kind of assassins. Yeah, Nocturne. Yeah. He can be tanky. Yeah, <laughs> so, I mean, like, a couple of these carries will get a lot more gold, which is pretty awesome. It seems like that'll benefit people with really fast clear times a lot. Yeah. And I, I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing, because it seems like the jungle's kind of stagnated a little bit, and you don't really see many people with slow clear times being played anymore. Yeah. So I'd like to see something in there for the slower junglers. Maybe they'll give them, like, a gold over time option? I'm not sure. <laughs> I know back in the day, your tanky slow junglers used to just buy heart of gold and pop yeah. a few of those on, you were all set. Yeah, no, that was definitely a good good thing. Um, but yeah, I'm we'll, sure Riot has, like, something in store for this, so we'll see how it works out. I, I can't really do too much conjecture as to how this will impact the meta. Yeah. But um, moving on from the jungle, we've got a different sort of uh, status from Baron buff coming up, and that is that... Your team will get an additional percentage damage versus towers, and also movement speed when out of combat. Yeah, now, I think they're uh, they're dropping the AD, AP, and regeneration thing because that kind of just led to really, really like a four minute pause on games, especially like pro level games, because no one wants to engage when your team is just has so much better stats. It's so true. You don't really see. It, it's tough, especially I've noticed in the gold level when people stop making terrible misplays. Once your game gets to the point where there's a team that's ahead, like around probably 15, 20 minutes, you don't really see games flip-flop that often unless you built specifically a late-game team comp to take yeah. it back. And after a Baron's taken, oftentimes if you didn't kill him there, you're done for. <laughs> Baron's kind of like a preliminary nexus. Yeah. But this is really exciting because this will give you the opportunity to sort of outplay the other people. So. If you're actually good and you're able to steal the Baron, you've got this movement speed. You can position your team wherever you'd like, and you can hit towers really hard and fast. Yeah, I mean, this new Baron buff is going to give you a really good percentage to damage the tower, so it's going to make pushing really awesome. And I think the movement speed has been compared to boots of mobility. So you're going to be able to move much faster than the other team to like swing around from the top uh, top tower all the way down to the bottom one really quickly and be able to like break these kind of stagnant... Um, like. I guess, inner shell that we have all the time in pro, pro teams yeah, where no, it's like... Yeah, it's great because yeah. it rewards good play in positioning as opposed to just, like, Steam making rolling. you more powerful, yeah. you know? It, it's definitely uh, something that rewards good play, which I always like to see more of, you know? League of Legends has often been touted as a game that requires less skill than other MOBAs. I personally disagree with that, <laughs> but it's always good when they sort of ramp up the skill level that's required. Now, Baron's going to be worth the same gold, or there hasn't been an announcement about a difference in gold. Yeah. We do know, however, that towers are now going to be worth 100 more gold, and the implications for that are astounding. What do yeah. you think? Um, right now, it's been confirmed that the outer towers on all the, the tier 1 kind of towers all give you 250 gold now when you kill them. So it's a lot of gold. I think it's going to make bot lane, because I play AD carry, you play support. Instead of sitting there just farming up for the entire 20 minutes of a laning phase, which we'd love to do, you can now push these towers down and get so much more gold for your team and kind of snowball from there. Yeah, I, I also think that this sort of uh, spells out a little bit of a push comp coming back sort of deal. <laughs> with like We see Heimerdinger's getting a buff, so uh, I think if you push down a tower, it's like killing a dragon, honestly. So yeah. if, you, if you get a team together and you move all five to one lane, push down a tower, push down mid, push down bot, that's like you just did three dragons. I yeah. Mean, and People can't come back from that kind of thing early. <laughs> so I hope we start to see some of the change in the meta, get rid of the stagnant stuff that's been going on from Season 3. It's good to see that Riot sort of had this in mind, but I'm sure they didn't want to drop it in the middle of Season 3 and change everything. Oh, yeah. No, that's the, how you make people mad. Yeah, these preseason changes are always, like, groundbreaking, and if they ever were put in the middle of a season, I could, like, see teams being in last place all the way up to first just because they know how to play the new game. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah, I'd like to see more push teams. That would be a whole nother ball game for us. And also, um, we're get, seeing a nerf to first blood when it comes in less than the four minute mark. So those super early first bloods are not going to be as advantageous for you anymore. Yeah, I think that's just going back to the getting rid of the early invades because, especially in pro games, you see it. You see teams just kind of fill each other out for like two minutes. And there's not really much to do. There's a lot of ward placement, not a lot of fights happen. 
So in, just getting rid of that entirely is actually probably a pretty good thing for moving the game forward. Yeah, I've always been excited about the early game invade phase, <laughs> yeah. but I think that this will kind of open the door for more excitement because if you like really get your button gear, get your whole team there, you should hit it right when like it starts to spawn. Yeah. And if they're like in the middle of blue and your people aren't hanging around, because they're probably <laughs> gonna want to go do minions. Yeah. So if you, if your team isn't hanging around, they, there could be devastating consequences. Yeah. I, I think it'll make it even more interesting for invades. <laughs> speaking as a true Thresh player. Um, Fair enough. Yeah, we've talked about our jungle items giving more gold. We've also seen a lot of changes to my favorite class, support. And I know a lot of you out there love us, and some of you <laughs> don't even know what we do, really. <laughs> you just go mid and, and get all the kills. But we've been having a tough time this season. It seems like in the late game, all we do is buy a row of five pinks, buy a row of five greens, get an oracles, and run out there and try to kill the other guy's pinks and greens. <laughs> and it's getting kind of old. So yep. uh, it seems like Riot's noticed, and they invited all their best support players over to check out the new changes, and now they've released kind of a preview of that. We're going to see a new item slot coming out this year, right? Yeah, which is uh, really cool. The new item slot's called uh, Trinket, and you'll be able to right now buy three different items. And what those items do is do you want to explain them? Uh, it seems like we've got an item that places a little ward, kind of like your Wriggles Lantern passive sort of deal. That's that's your first trinket. Your second trinket will reveal any uh, stealth, like team of mushrooms. Uh, green wards. Or green wards. Yep. yep. <laughs> it used to be any wards, but we'll talk to you more about what's going to happen with green wards. And then the final trinket is like a mini clairvoyance, so you can see w what you want to see on the map. I personally think this is a better place for clairvoyance than as a summoner spell, because... Yeah. No one runs it. It's it's terrible. Yeah, and I mean, you only need clairvoyance in those really niche situations where it's like, I need to see if they're doing Baron right now. I've I need to see if they're over at red buff or something like that. Yeah. So I feel like that's actually going to be really strong for a jungler. And clairvoyance is kind of like the playing from like play, playing from the position of losing already. You know, mm -hmm. you, you shouldn't need clairvoyance if you're winning. Yeah. But if you're losing, it like becomes almost viable. I wouldn't <laughs> say it's still balanced with other things like ignite and exhaust. But um, yeah, it's good to see that popped onto an item, so we supports have a little more to do. Now yeah, we talked to you about green wards and how you would be able to use your uh, your miniature oracles to reveal them, but not pink wards. We conspicuously left those out, and that's because we've got some new ward changes coming in season four or in our preseason right now. And the ward changes are as follows. It seems the green ward will remain the same and will be stealth and will give you vision. Pinks, however, will be visible and permanent. So they won't go away, they won't have a time limit, but you can only carry one per person. And as you can tell by the fact that they will be visible, they're very easy to kill. So we're gonna get rid of a lot of this cat and mouse pink play between supports where <laughs> whoever has one more pink will just watch the other guy and then wait to see where his last pink is and then go over and get rid of it. Yeah. So uh, you can't really just like win with straight money anymore, the vision war. You're, you're gonna get one pink, it's gonna be comparable cost to a green, and it's gonna be visible, but it's gonna grant that you vision denial. It's really more a pure sort of idea of what the pink ward's about. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think... Uh, we're going to be having to speed up a little bit here, but I think the pink ward will be really good around Baron, um, Dragon as it has always been. But I think teams are going to actually focus wards now. So you're going to see a lot of pro players, instead of battling over objectives, it's going to be battling over wards. That's true, and each team can only have five pinks, so well, can't I think go it's on only, too long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think um, once your ward's destroyed, you can go buy another pink, but... That means you would have to go back to base and lose yeah, an objective, probably. We can't have that going on. <laughs> so, um, and also, we've got some changes coming to support in the form of masteries. Supports are going to be getting a lot more gold this year. Well, it's kind of funny because <laughs> they we don't have to buy as many wards, and we're getting a lot more gold. So what are we going to do with all that gold, I'm wondering? Carry supports. It, yeah, it's, it seems like we're going to be able to buy real items and actually accomplish real goals in the game, which is I kind think of exciting. Th yeah, I think those AP Nidalees, AP Luxes you see as supports every so often, I think they're going to love it because they'll actually be able to carry and not have to play support. Yeah, exactly. I think more people will play support, too, because you'll be able to play like a normal character. <laughs> the, the mastery I'm most excited about is sort of a friendly pickpocket that's been announced, and it's when you're... Uh, your carry is farming and getting gold. You're going to get a small percentage of that if you're if you're near him, and that's that's just a godsend because it really it allows the supports to focus on the farming of their lane mate as opposed to getting the kills or sustaining them. 
you really get to focus on giving them the farm because you're getting gold out of it too. It's a much more direct sort of correlation between their farm and how well you're doing in lane. I, I'm very excited for that one. Yeah, and it's definitely going to show up that the bottom lane that uh, wins will actually be able to snowball much harder now. So playing an AD carry, playing support, doesn't mean you won't be able to carry games anymore. It means that you'll actually be able to put make an impact in that mid and late game pretty pretty quickly. Yeah, especially if you grab the tower. It's going to be huge. Yeah. Well, that's all the news we have for you right now. Uh, coming up, we'll be having our gaming news hour with Alex and Eric, where we'll be talking about the latest console releases, also the Stanley Parable, and finally, we'll be talking about new legislation regarding crowdsourcing. So please stay with us. We'll be back in a moment. Have a good one, guys.